Okay, we are rolling. We are rolling, brother. Champions of Champions Boxing Talk is back. Well, let's get straight to it. Deontay Wilder v. Luis Ortiz for the Heavyweight Championship of the World. Right. We've seen this fight, didn't we? We've, it's been played already. And it was a very good fight. You know, it was a tremendous fight, if you remember. You know, there was controversy, there was drama, there was knockdowns, there was a, a knockout in the end. Deontay Wilder was pushed to his limits in huge portions of that fight. Um, many people had Luis Ortiz outthinking and outboxing and even hurting Deontay Wilder and being ahead on the scorecards. So, the presumption is that the next fight is going to be good as well, which it could be because the heavyweight division is, you know, it's unpredictable. It is unlike any other division in the sport, in the sport's history, right? A flyweight can make a mistake and get tagged and think, oh, I won't do that next time and make the adjustment. He can get hit again and think, right, third time, look it, that guy's not going to land. In heavyweight boxing, you don't get that opportunity. You can make a glimmer of a mistake, ask Lennox Lewis. And that's all she wrote. Against a guy who is considered a few levels below you. <laughs> I mean, an example. It's very unlikely. Look at the amount of shots. Go back and watch Miguel Cotto v. Floyd Mayweather. Go watch and watch Castillo v. Floyd Mayweather. Go watch Floyd Mayweather v. Marcus Madonna again. And those guys land some good shots. Madonna is classed as a puncher at that weight. But Floyd, because he fights in lower weight classes, you know, can think, better luck landing that next time. Lennox Lewis did not have that option when he got hit by Oliver McCall and Hasim Rathman. Because the heavyweight division is different. We have to accept that. Whether you rank the current heavyweight division in the league of the old-timers, like Muhammad Ali, Lennox Lewis's era, you know, the best of Mike Tyson in the 80s, whatever you think, all of those guys can punch. The right shot, it is over. It's over with any boxer if they hit you with the right shot, obviously, but more so with the heavyweights. Mistakes have to be to a premium you know they have to be like rare rolling stone tickets you can't make many of them Luis Ortiz was virtually at times doing what a Mayweather would do with Deontay Wilder as I said outsmarting him Deontay Wilder was struggling to deal with that southpaw stance he was getting hurt himself. If that was a Floyd Mayweather fight, you would think the other guy is finished. But in the heavyweight division, and particularly with Deontay Wilder, you know every second of every minute of every round counts. Ask Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was on his way to a landslide victory, and in round 12, he squared his shoulders up, posing in front of Deontay Wilder, and he found out that Deontay Wilder was not Vladimir Klitschko. In other words, he will throw. And the more desperate he gets, the more dangerous he gets. He's like the Hulk. <laughs> you know, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. You, you know, it's counterproductive, but it works. You know, in the movies, they tell you not to get angry, keep focused. But the Hulk gets angry, it works for him. And Deontay Wilder in the real world we live in, the more reckless he gets, the better he gets. Strange, but true. And Deontay Wilder is more patient than people think. And I think that throws opponents off. I think they think, oh, I'm all right here, you know. I can out-jab this guy. I'm four rounds to one-up, blah, blah, blah. This is a lot easier than advertised. And then, boom. Ouch. It's either you're down or you're out. Ask Dominic Brazil. Dominic Brazil, I think, clipped Deontay Wilder on the top of the head and went back at the end of that exchange looking confident. Then Wilder just seemed to run out like a superhero, throw that right hand right down the pipe, and it was game over. 
Even by heavyweight standards, it's pretty unique. Particularly for this era. He can be losing to, I don't care who you throw out there, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz. I mean, they can all knock each other out. Tyson Fury. And then he has that ultimate equaliser. Tyson Fury kept him very much on the right, on I should say, on his left hand. Because I don't think Deontay Wilder's left hand is particularly that prominent. If he can work on that, put some snap in it, more snap, wow, very dangerous. Because he is quick. He's athletic. He's a warrior. You know, no matter how you scored the Tyson Fury fight, no matter what you were scoring the first Luis Ortiz fight, Deontay Wilder stuck in those fights. Never lost heart, never lost hope. And whether by design or justice, <laughs> he got results out of situations where it looked like he might not. You know, that has to be a credit to his character, right? I'm not going to talk about all the politics of Anthony oh, yeah, he accepted this purse, that purse. I don't want to know that. I'm just talking about the guy when I see him fight the ring. Yes, he's not a fundamentalist. You are never going to see Deontay Wilder acting like Pernell Whitaker. But what he does have, which is, which makes him exciting, heart, determination, power, true essence of heavyweightness, if that's a word, heavyweightness, right? Controversy, the things he says outside the ring. People may slate him, but they watch him, right? I.e. Mike Tyson-esque. And you know Deontay Wilder really doesn't mean the things he says. I don't believe it for a second that he does. I think he's trying to sell the fights. You know, he's not as big a name as Anthony Joshua, obviously. I don't think he's gone as far in terms of being a brand as he would have hoped to have been. But still, he's worth a watch. No doubt, because of that power alone and the drama. He can put drama into a fight against a journeyman and he can put drama into a fight against the top-level guy. You don't often see that. The further levels you go up, the more you kind of see chess matches which the casual fan really isn't interested in. But this fight, I think, is being put on because they think it will be entertaining. Because you have got two people that can punch. You have got, you know, an Olympic guy in there. And you've got a heavyweight champion. Why do promoters do this? You know, it's no secret that Bob Arum, you know, he put Manny Pacquiao in with Marquez four times. There was a reason. Every one of them fights was entertaining. The styles matched. Same with Eric Morales. Every one of them fights in their own way were entertaining. You could almost see the excitement thinking about the fight from Bob Arum when he put these fights together. Yet when Pacquiao Mayweather finally happened, I could see Bob Arum was excited about the money. But he didn't look all that. I remember at ringside, he kind of looked like, yeah, here it is. He kind of knew because he's been in the game that long. He knew these styles were not going to make for a great fight. So he wasn't really that excited about the contest. And after three or four rounds, everybody in the arena thought, yeah, he's right. He didn't say it publicly, but I could see it on his face. I could see it on his face like he was there to watch a game of cards rather than a fight. You know? Let's hope for the best, but likely, or the likelihood is between two technicians of the highest level, the casual fans are going to be disappointed. But with Marquez and Pacquiao, they were never disappointed. But the thing is, with rematches, statistically, they always go worse than the first fight for the guy that lost the first fight. Evidenced. Lennox Lewis's cases were unique. But Stavern fought Deontay Wilder once. Went the distance. So, the second fight, Wilder just wipes him out. Because then he knows where the head's going to be, where the shot is, and where to plant that right hand. He's seen it. Right? Marquez was doing probably worse in a couple of subsequent fights for Pacquiao. In, before Marquez knocked Pacquiao out, you have to remember, Marquez was busted up worse than he had been in any of the previous three fights. Eric Morales did worse against Pacquiao in the subsequent two fights. 
right? Pacquiao got the revenge for the first loss. And then the next one was even easier than the second one. So it's easy to presume that Deontay Wilder may make lighter work of Luis Ortiz this time around. Also, a few years have passed. How old is Luis Ortiz anyway? He has that puncher's chance. But Deontay Wilder is a warrior. And although you say fundamental skills and all this lot may be lacking, in other words, he's not a Larry Holmes or Lennox Lewis, he doesn't know how to lose because he hasn't lost yet. Does that mean everything? No, it doesn't, obviously. It's overplayed these days. But Deontay Wilder now has faced adversity. And in his mind, and this is what's important, again, you might score. I thought Tyson Fury won, but in Deontay Wilder's mind, nobody has beaten him. Two top contenders, Fury and Luis Ortiz, failed to beat him. That is going to be real confidence for a guy that already has a self-esteem that is Erratic at times, but still there. So, for that alone, it makes him extremely dangerous. Especially when he's seen Tyson Fury wipe the floor with Klitschko in Germany. Now, people might say Tyson Fury had virtually got off the couch... And had two fights against two journeymen. And then give Deontay Wilder the night of his life. But athletes find a way to delete the negatives out. People who succeed in life kind of find a way to rationalise. Again, you've got Manny Pacquiao saying he thought he beat Floyd Mayweather. Now, to you, you might not believe that. But Manny Pacquiao is so confident in his own skin... He thinks, right, tonight was, you know, I got robbed on the scorecards, but I'm going to move on and win from here. And he's done it. Didn't he beat Keith Furman last time out? Deontay Wilder. I, I was thinking, is that Fury result going to affect him? You know, all the country. And then he does that to Dominic Brazil a lot quicker than Anthony Joshua did. It looked like the same Deontay Wilder. Because Deontay Wilder convinced himself... That was the best Tyson Fury. Forget the couch stuff. That was the best version. And I got robbed. The judges give a, a, a draw because they liked Tyson, Tyson Fury's story Sorry, about mental health and all this. That's how he rationalised it. And he made it into a positive for himself. So Luis Ortiz, for me, has got it all to do. The controversy in the first fight, really, for me, not only the scorecards were wonky. I mean, they were thinking about Wilder, Joshua that at that point. Maybe not so much now, though. You know, a few, you know, waters crossed the bridge a little bit since then. But in the seventh round, Deontay Wilder was hurt by some crushing shots. Real heavy looking shots. He was wobbling on his feet. And the doctor took more time than he should have done to see to Deontay Wilder and that left questions and then after that Deontay Wilder went and finished the job Deontay Wilder has a stanima as well he kind of forces himself through things again it comes from his will one of these days a, a true guy of technique is going to wipe him out we, you know we know that but it hasn't happened yet could it be Luis Ortiz? Yes, he's got the technique to do it. But he's psychologically been beaten by this guy. As I said, Wilder beats Stavern far easier in the rematch than he did in the first fight. I'm predicting when you've been knocked out and when you're not Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis is a special case. He's one of the best heavyweights of all time. Let's not compare every heavyweight that gets stopped to Lennox Lewis. Right? Because it just doesn't happen often. Right? That guys bounce back like that. They have to be special. Is Luis Ortiz that special? I think he's too old for starters. 
I think Wilder is patient, but once he fires, his pace is something that you can't keep up with. And then he does let them right hands go, right? He kind of pause with that jab. But as long as he's in range, you're always in danger. And Luis Ortiz has got to fire himself. When he fires, he's open himself, right? Wilder's ability to punch when you're punching and to think when a gap appears is underrated. Forget, forget fundamentals. He has an instinct about when to throw that shot. And when he's hurt you, there is no letting go. He goes in for the kill. Let's imagine, you know when Klitschko dropped Anthony Joshua at Wembley? Now, I'm not saying Wilder would set up that shot the same as Klitschko. It might not even happen that way. But suppose Joshua gets up on wobbly feet against Deontay Wilder. Do you think Deontay Wilder's going to be cautious from there? No, he's not. He's going to throw the kitchen sink and probably finish Anthony Joshua there. He is not a conservative when it's time to invest, shall we say. I think Luis Ortiz... I wouldn't be surprised if there was a shock. I mean, look at Andy Ruiz. I mean, anything in the heavyweight division is possible. But if it goes to form, I see Deontay Wilder stopping Luis Ortiz the mid to late rounds. Maybe even earlier, because he's seen him now. And, of course, he knows really now that Luis Ortiz does have some good technique about him and is talented. I don't think he really fought as much before, but now he knows. And possibly because Deontay Wilder has fought better opposition in Luis Ortiz and Tyson Fury and come through it, Deontay Wilder's game may have been raised. Maybe that jab is a little better come fight night. But I think that if he worked on that left hand, if he could snap with the left hand, then throw the right in, my word. <laughs> then the division is his. It might be anyway. <laughs> the division might be his anyway. Who's to say? We will see. But I'm going for Deontay Wilder again. I'm not going... For Going with him by points. I think he does what he always does. I think he stops Luis Ortiz after Luis Ortiz gives, you know, a fair account of himself. But in those fair accounts, he gets caught and Wilder's punch is worth two of your punches. Let's just say that. Maybe three. He has that strength and power in the punch and the, and the speed and the snap in that right hand. So, it's Deontay Wilder for me, by KO, simple as that. It's going to be a shock if Luis Ortiz pulls it off. If Luis Ortiz wins, I think that's also possibly by knockout. But for me, no disrespect to Luis Ortiz. As I said, Deontay Wilder hits you with that right hand. Good night, Vienna. And this is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. I'm out, brother.